Guys, how are we doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. I am excited today. Going to be taking the dual wheels off of my 1025R and installing wheel spacers instead. I ran the dual setup for a year. It's time to take those off, put some wheel spacers on, and run those for a year or more and see how they perform. If you didn't know, I am sponsored by Bore Wheel Spacers. You know, I was searching for a long time for a good channel sponsor that I could partner with that had to meet a lot of criteria. You know, made in the USA, had a wide range appeal, but made quality products as well. You know how serious I take tractor safety, and this is gonna really enhance that. These are two inches wide. You don't necessarily need to go six inch wide spacers on either side, and it's gonna be dependent on your machine, your situation. There's gonna be aluminum and steel as well, but if you're running a mid-mount mower, you're gonna have certain limitations on most mower decks with how wide you can go. Two inch spacers today, it's gonna to make a big difference, add roughly 10% to the overall width of the tractor. So if you wanna see what wheel spacers look like installed on your tractor, maybe how to do it, then you'll wanna stick around because I'm gonna do this for the first time. So it's gonna be a little bit of a learn as you go, but maybe it'll save you a little bit of time when it comes to your turn. Hey, so if you like what you see here, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. Hit that subscribe button right down below and read through the description as well. You'll find links to where you can get those Bora wheel spacers and all sorts of other cool tractor products or head on over to goodworkstractors.com. simple not many tools you need just a socket set and a torque wrench to get the right uh, wheel bolt torque when you do put the um, wheel spacers and then the wheels back on I think it's 89 uh, pounds that you need to have on the torque wrench we have that set already that information should be in your manual as well so always reference that but let's get started hmm that's interesting why is that one all really hard why is that one so hard then huh I feel like I'm going to break it. Well, no idea why, but that's how things go sometimes. This last uh, nut trying to get it off just sheared right off with a, a lot of force. I didn't have a breaker bar or anything on there, but it was... I don't know what the deal was. It was just seized up on there, wouldn't turn. So I ended up shearing it off. If I ever go to put these duels back on, I guess it looks like I'm getting a new bolt. Using the breaker bar this time. Have another one giving us fits on this side too, which is weird. We've taken these kits on and off a handful of times. Haven't had any issues until now, so I don't know what's going on. I'm trying to do this with one person just so you can kind of see how you could do it at home. I've got the bolts all really loose on here so far. And again, most of you probably aren't gonna be taking duels off and putting adapters on, but if you get duels and you need to take them off and then put it back on at a later date, you can see how to do it. Got the bolts, or the nuts I should say, really loose on there. I'm gonna jack up the back now and then just finger loosen uh, and get the bolts or the, uh, the nuts off and then we should be able to pull the tires all the way off and then just put the threaded rods, those threaded bolts, push them out through the back side and we'll have everything off. You can see these dual wheel spacers were on there really tight and snug. You know, did wear off uh, some of the paint, or all the paint I should say, right around the rim where they're connecting, you know, mating, and that's how tight of a fit it is uh, holding it in place right there. So, just something to keep in mind. Remember, this is the wider wheel spacer for those dual wheel adapters. Keeps a bigger gap in between the dual wheels to prevent anything from being clogged up in there and stuck like rocks or sticks, so easier for clean out. Okay. Great.
Okay, so most of you guys are starting with what we see here, the stock setup. You don't have the duals on there, so we're gonna get to work. Gonna loosen all the lugs on both wheels, and we're gonna jack it up. We do have tire chocks on both the front wheels to prevent extra motion maybe going forward. We're gonna have it jacked up in the back. One wheel at a time, let's see how it goes. Hey, so I wanna remind you guys, I don't do this every day. So if you see something that you think would be helpful for me in the future, for anybody watching, make sure you leave a comment down below. You'll help us all out. I could get my drill. But... Now, if you didn't know, I want to mention this really quick, that you actually have two different uh, width settings with the tires themselves, the tires and the wheels, I should say. That's the secret is going to be in the wheel. And this center welded on plate, this ring that's in the middle that actually bolts to your hub is going to be offset. So if you imagine this way, visualizing that wheel, that yellow wheel in the middle, that plate is not perfectly in the middle. It's actually set off to one side. And so that gives you a narrow and a wide position with these same wheels. So if you're looking for a little bit of extra stability, even just to start out with, figure out what setting you have going on right now, and then you can adjust it with the spacers as well and still have even more combinations to work with. Roughly four inches on this setting. Approximately six and a half inches on this setting, so approximately a two and a half inch difference. Now I do wish we had a piece of steel wool around here because that would be the ideal material, I think, to clean this up. However, we're gonna work with what we have. Time is of the essence, but you do wanna have a nice, flat, clean surface here to apply it to. So you're gonna see that Bora, again, they've got aluminum, which this is anodized here, but they also have steel spacers. So they really kind of lean towards the aluminum and I tend to agree. Um, the steel will weigh more, but it's gonna be pretty marginal on smaller spacers like this. The aluminum are gonna be a lot less maintenance. With the steel, you need to prime them, paint them, and then use some anti-seize uh, between the hub and the spacer as well. So the aluminum are straightforward. This is how they come in. You're gonna use your existing wheel bolts that you take off when you detach your wheel. You're gonna put it right through one of these holes, you know, all five times, and then tighten this down to the hub itself, and then you're gonna use these additional bolts here and stems to attach your wheel to the spacer. You know, so we're doing the 1025R today, but obviously they make these in all sorts of sizes. So these are gonna be for my 4066R that we're gonna do in the future. Gonna be a little bit wider as well, if you can see that. So, uh, what are I, two and a half, three inches, <laughs> somewhere in that ballpark, I forget off the top of my head. But you might be wondering what BORA stands for, Bulletproof Off-Road Adapters, okay? Again, these are made in America, material is sourced in America. So love to hear that and see that. But considering that these are coming in so many different sizes, widths, configurations, you can get them from one inch all the way out to six inches wide. These are gonna have a lead time. It's a made to order item because of all the custom options that are available. So it's one of those items like with anything these days, you wanna plan ahead. When you place your order, expect to have a lead time to wait before they ship to you. These are worth the wait though. And while we are doing this on a tractor, they are available for trucks, you know, all sorts of vehicles and UTVs as well. So a couple other differences between what Bora has for sale and what you might find for sale on a place like eBay or Amazon. Number one, these are gonna have a lifetime warranty on them. And number two, really important that is an issue with a lot of other spacers is that these are gonna be hub centric and wheel centric. So you can see the little ridges that are around here and the rounded out edges on the backside. There's no other milling or machining that you have to do on these spacers to get them to fit properly on your machine. We got the first one just screwed in a few times there. We're gonna get the other bolts pushed in place as well. There. Kind of do this by hand a little bit right now. Remember, we're going to end up using the torque wrench to get these things firmly into place. The standard socket is proving to be the better choice here.
still doing that. Okay, stupid question for you guys, but the hub kept spinning around. I put a jack center to this side, lowered it down so the tire's making contact on the other side, but this hub just kept spinning as we were trying to tighten it down. So we put the parking brake on, we put it in four wheel drive. I don't know what did it, but that seemed to kind of immobilize or, or make this hub over here, this side of the axle stationary. Is there something else I should have done? So with this torque wrench, you tighten, you don't go too fast, like any torque wrench, I guess, but you tighten it slowly, not too fast, because you're gonna hear a, a pop, and that's when the uh, the bearing inside here kind of slips over to the other side, and you know that it's reached the right amount of torque. So if you listen closely, you'll be able to hear it. There it is. That one's done, this one's done. I think we're all done now. You'll see at the very end I go around and just double check each one to make sure it got it to the torque setting. Again, just applying minimal pressure just to make sure it engages and then pops right back out without over torquing. So you might be wondering why that looks so difficult, and that is because these tires are loaded with liquid ballast. So the tires and the wheels themselves, if I recall, are only about 40 pounds. But once you have them filled up with liquid ballast, it's going to add around 110, 120 pounds of additional weight. Wow, I'm already loose, loose. Okay, so just came to the other side. We got the first side done, piece of cake, no problem. Didn't really time it. We're gonna try to time this side. Just went to uh, loosen all of the, the five bolts here, holding the wheel to the hub. One of the downsides, I suppose, of having the dual wheel adapters, you don't have easy access. You're supposed to check uh, your your wheel bolts every 10, 15 hours, something like that, reference your manual, one of the more common things you should check, take a look at this. By hand, twisting that. So that's something kind of dangerous if you think about it. So I guess that's a trade-off. With the with a dual wheel adapter, you have no access to really see if your original um, bolts are, are torqued correctly and still tight to your hub. But the same thing with these wheel spacers, you're going to lose that ability to check the bolt torqueness or tightness of that spacer attached to the hub as well. I will say besides this torque wrench that we have here, everything else we needed is in that DeWalt socket set, which 
which is pretty handy. I've got one here for the shop and one at home as well. And now we've got these hand tighten again in here and we're gonna be torquing them down. Again, manual says 89 foot pounds. Oh, here we go again. Uh, let's just try just the parking brake this time. She did? There's quite a few comments actually on that video. I'll tell you, two people wouldn't make it easier. Kind of regretting wanting to show you with one person. All right, so we started at 11.30, it's currently 11.56, so 26 minutes, had a couple interruptions, not, not too long, so, you know, 20 to 25 minutes for the second side, probably the, a little bit longer for the first side, just being um, the first one we did. If you had two people doing it, I guarantee you could probably knock off at least five minutes um, aligning the tires. If you don't have loaded tires, it's gonna be easier to maneuver them though too. Um, that was the longest part of the process, is getting the, the, the wheels back on the hubs. Besides that though, all we gotta do now, we gotta drive it around, make sure there's no vibration, nothing wonky about it, you know, that we might have uh, an issue as far as how we seated it. So we're gonna give it a spin right now and see what happens. Two thumbs up. I think we're good to go here. No vibration, no wobble, nothing noticed from the operator seat, nothing from behind the camera. It's nice when things go pretty smooth. And I'll tell you, this tractor whips around pretty good without the extra weight of the duals on there, which were also loaded. I'm thinking about putting wheel weights on here though. I may do that just to give some extra counterweight a little bit, but awfully spry without a loader, a mower, a backhoe, or anything else on it. It's fun to just zip around. Again, I don't claim to be an expert on installing wheel spacers. This was my first time doing it and it went off without a hitch for the most part. Uh, pretty straightforward and smooth. I'd say you get a partner to do it about an hour, maybe an hour and a half with cleanup and setup and everything else, but easy to do. Order them, link down below, bore wheel spacers. Again, all the benefits I've mentioned earlier. There's gonna be information on our website if you need to go there and follow through to Bora, but you order directly from them. And something I didn't mention earlier, but I wanna make sure you know, this is not John Deere specific. They have them for Kubotas, Mahindra, Coyote, New Holland, you name it. Any tractor under the sun, they can get you a wheel spacer for. So don't think, just because you see a John Deere here, it has to be John Deere only. Hey, so if you found this video helpful, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. Hit that subscribe button right down below and read through the description underneath the video or head on over to goodworkstractors.com. Hey, thanks again for stopping by and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.